You can go ahead. Oh, okay. So thanks so much for being with us. Um, the press conference was really moving. Uh, my first question would be, uh, given the circumstances, how difficult for you has it been to be here, to have this picture here, like the process, how difficult? I, I would say making a film is it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in life outside of raising children. Um, you know what? Making a film was harder than raising children. But you have you, you yeah. have five daughters. You know, so. you, you know it, when you have a story you have to tell, that your spirit is speaking to you, then you don't think look at obstacles. You just look at the finished product mm. and you sprint toward it with everything in your soul. We made this film in April and I remember saying to myself, Nate, the quicker you get this thing out, the quicker people see it, the quicker hearts can possibly be touched, the quicker you can save someone's baby from being shot down in the street and there being trauma on both sides. So, you know, for me, it was calling people that I, that, so that, that are supportive of my filmmaking, calling actors that are talented, getting a crew together, uh, and really just sprinting full speed uh, at this thing getting done. And again, we, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of days. We didn't have a lot of money, uh, but we all wanted the same thing. Uh, and that was to create a film that we could release into the world with the hope that it could save a life and, and, hu and humanize people again. Why are you here supporting Nate? Yes, full support. Uh, Nate called me up, said a new film. I thought, I thought he said, I thought, it was, I thought he was talking about a short film. No, it's not a short film, it's a feature film. I said, when you do that? Came to New York and uh, loved the film. Told Nate whatever, you know, I want to help. You know, I want to, you know, whatever you need, this film needs to be seen and, and whatever capacity I could get in where I could fit in, <laughs> you know, let's go. And here we are in Venice. Yeah. Tonight, the world premiere. Mm -hmm. um, what lessons do you get from your own film? I mean, what do you think you as citizens can learn about uh, police brutality out of your, out of your work? Citizens? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that citizens can have a better perspective and understanding of, one, what a police is, is feeling in the moment, you know, what their training is. You know, as you notice, this is our training. This is our protocol. This is our training. This is our protocol. You can take it away from it always being this bad cop pro, you know, personal thing uh, and recognize that there's a system in place that facilitates a certain interaction. So the hope, and, I, and I've had so many conversations with people, I didn't know that, you know, once they are, you know, I didn't know that cops were trained not to de-escalate, you know what I mean? Or, you know, I, I didn't know that, you know, and I don't want to give spoilers away, but after a police shooting, this is the process by which it happens. I think by informing the public our citizens, as to what they're spending their tax dollars on, you can catalyze them, make them be, want to be more engaged in changing that system. So why I made it to be entertaining, and I hope it was, hope it is, uh, I also wanted to give the public a, a, a better understanding, one, of the humanity of these human beings that are not robots, uh, and the process by which they've been reared within, in hope that we could all get together as citizens and vote on policy that changes their behavior through police and device training. You said in the press conference something like that Cannes Film Festival considered you kind of a black um, spokesman. Would you elaborate on that? Like what? Like, like a black speaker for black people? No, it's, it's what I was trying to say, sir, is that uh, I've, I've been coming to... My first film festival was 1986, so she's gonna have it in Cannes. So, you know, Cannes, Venice, Cannes, Venice. Mm -hmm. And so often, with the foreign press, if there's somebody black from America that has some type of notoriety, they, you know, they, they, you, they project on you as being the spokesperson mm -hmm. for 45 million Americans, something which I've never done. I've always mm -hmm. said, if I say something, it's me. Mm -hmm. And I was just alluding to a, knowing that coming to Can two years ago, instead of answering that same question like, what is going on in your country? I said, let me think of a title of a, a, title of a film I could just say will answer it. And it was uh, The Year of Living Dangerously. That was two years ago. 
So we're still in the year. It's a long year. Same year. It's the same. We live in a very, very dangerous time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's globally, not just talking about the, the, this uh, phenomenon of the right that's happening all over. And it's times like this where we need artists, my brother right here, Nate, that holds up the mirror and says, look at this. This is what's happening. What are we going to do about it? Okay, guys, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. My man. From Madrid.